Today we're going to be looking at another video by Kurt Kazan, specifically World War Alien, how to win an interstellar war. Interstellar nuclear weapons, perhaps? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check it out. Could aliens destroy us from light years away? Sure. Hmm. Another day at the Kurzgesagt Labs, where we answer the most important questions with science. Today, how might civilizations wage war across light years? Oh, those are what cool kind looking. of devastating weapons could they use? And what would they look like? You could conceivably do it with nuclear weapons. You're just going to need to put them on rockets that are capable of traveling interstellar distances. I mean, there's plenty of those examples in sci-fi, even some of the harder sci-fi. But in fact, that's one interesting idea. Rather than using a spaceship, just sending missiles directly there. It'd just take a while to get there. Barring other sci-fi technology, such as light speed or near light speed. With that, you, could, you don't need, really need the nukes. You could just ram the vessels directly into it. Meet our two players. A yellow dwarf star system home to a species of primates. Oh my. <laughs> Starring Ash Ketchum, really? Humans, as they call themselves, recently became a technological civilization. They have they rockets, use Pokemon? nuclear reactors, and memes. How cute. Yes. The Scorpions disagree. They reside on a planet around the orange dwarf star HD 40307, 42 light years away. Don't the think Scorpion this is civilization real. developed earlier than humans, <laughs> and they have much better technology. They've recently built a Dyson Swarm around their star, which yeah. gives them near limitless energy. And they noticed humanity. We Not limitless, but compared to the Earth, yeah. Um, being able to extract that much energy from a star, we're nowhere close to that. It's unfortunate as the Scorpions are planning a hyperspace bypass through our solar system. So they decided they that the humanity reference? has to go. Interstellar war is hard, though. Front lines, tactics, and logistics are meaningless at these scales. It's also fought across time. Decades will pass yes. between firing a weapon and learning whether it hit or not. Yep, that's true. Again, barring any fancy sci-fi stuff. Sending an invasion fleet is futile. Even if the Smorpions travel at a large fraction of the speed of light, the journey to Earth would take decades or even centuries, and humans would have plenty of time to prepare. If you want to learn more about the mind they wouldn't have any supply lines. Alien civilizations, we made a video about it. Today, we'll help the Scorpions construct a weapon that is not only extremely long range and as fast as physically possible, but that will totally destroy everything on Earth. So, no human survivors will come to enact vengeance on Smorp in the future. In inter hey, it's the thing that they used from their uh, How to Nuke a City video. If you're interested in my reaction to that, I'll pin it down below in the comments. A war you want to win with one shot. Our bird scientists have found three Scorpion designs the star laser, <laughs> the relativistic laser. missile, and the ultra relativistic electron beam. <laughs> all based on real technologies <laughs> that humans are using in some form already. Let's see how they work. The star laser. As an advanced technological civilization, the Scorpions harness the energy of their star by surrounding it with billions of solar power satellites. This Dyson Swarm collects 1% of the star's energy output. A million, billion, billion watts. 50 That's a lot. Much as I love nuclear power, can't do that. At least not with today's technology. Though, to be fair, that is a form of nuclear power. It's basically an indirect way of getting nuclear fusion power from a really, really big fusion reactor known as a star. A billion times more than all humanity generates. What if all the power of the Dyson Swarm, all those satellites, were used to create a star laser? Like any laser, the bigger it is, the longer its range. Human-built lasers use small mirrors to focus, so they have short ranges. The small could, it go could turn their entire Dyson though, Swarm sure. into a collective focusing element a million kilometers wide. Okay. The star laser has an insane range as a result, enough to focus on target Earth from a distance of over two million really? light years. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, granted, your lasers are going to be that powerful. I mean, forget the the laser is designed to cause nuclear fusion reactors on Earth are only on the order of megawatts, and here you're dealing with, well, <laughs> you saw how many zeros they use. Let's shoot it. 
countless tiny beams combine into a single huge beam. Laser beams it's are like normally invisible star. in space, but the star laser is so powerful that light scattering off bits of dust and gas in its path makes it clearly visible in the sky. Sure. A gigantic column of green light. The laser travels at the speed of light, which oddly enough is still pretty slow on a galactic level. Yeah. It takes a whole day until the laser has left the Smorpion system. Shooting in... Hopefully their planet doesn't get caught in its path. <laughs> ...the emptiness between stars. It will travel for decades, occasionally melting the odd bit of interstellar dust or asteroid. Hey, it's the slave one. 42 years after being fired, it arrives without warning. Humans only notice a weird green glow in the sky. Because it's traveling at the speed of light. One percent of the energy of a star concentrated into a beam the diameter of Earth traveling 42 light years. What's interesting is, yes, yeah, since it's traveling at the speed of light, you couldn't see it coming. That would require communications devices that communicate faster than light, which, again, has that same problem. Also, they'd have to aim 42 years ahead. So where if, it, if this planet's 42 light years away, then they'd have to aim at 42 years ahead, taking into account the relative motion of their solar system versus our solar system, our planet within the solar system, their planet within their solar system. It can get pretty complicated for something traveling at a straight line. Burns the exposed half of the planet with the intensity of three million suns. The seas boil and evaporate. Maybe they're referring to the, uh, I, I think they mean three million suns in terms of their effect on Earth. They're only using 1% of a smaller sun, but granted they're, they're concentrating it into the size of the Earth, which is very, very small relative to 1% of a smaller star. Fires scour the land, and within minutes, Earth's crust begins to melt into a sea of lava. As the planet rotates, it turns into a red-hot hell with no trace of life. After a day, it's all over, and the laser dies down. In another 42 years, the Smorpions will know if they've been successful. <laughs> That's another thing about interstellar war. Did we win? When you attack, your grandchildren will be the ones to find out if you won. It's like all the bombs from World War II exploding in the 80s, and us only seeing the effect today. Okay, this Now that's an interesting, and I guess it kind of, you could kind of say that about war in general, how it's a lot of the, um, the people in power making all, making all the decisions, and yet the, uh, the younger um, indoctrinated people are the ones that are actually fighting the war. I'm talking about dictatorships mainly when I say that. Bit of, bit of symbolism there. Our laser's extreme range, speed of light attack, and ability to melt down any target make it a premier interstellar weapon. But is there something else? The relativistic missile. One other thing about that is it's kind of inefficient. You're just taking out one planet when you're using something with 1% of the energy of the sun, when you could use that for non-military means to just power your solar system civilization and possibly give you enough energy to make interstellar craft to go colonize other systems. What if instead of converting the energy of their Dyson Swarm into a laser, the Smorpions used it to shoot a super bullet? A relativistic missile going as close to the speed of light as possible. Now, that's what I was talking about earlier. This sort of weapon is at the limits of what the Smorpion's technology can handle, as it requires loads of a highly dangerous material, antimatter, the evil twin of regular matter. <laughs> Humans have only managed to produce a few nanograms of antimatter. With their unlimited energy, Smorpions can manufacture it they at an could. industrial scale to build antimatter rockets. When antimatter and matter are mixed, they annihilate, which in more practical terms means there's a big, big boom releasing gamma rays and plasma. It doesn't always necessarily have to be big. This sort of thing actually happens all the time, naturally. Just high energy light, such as X-rays or gamma rays, when they're in the vicinity of an atomic nucleus, could create a particle and its antiparticle, usually, say, in a such as, say, an electron as a positron, an anti-electron, with gamma rays uh, interaction with, with nuclei. Now, this doesn't happen all the time. We're talking high-energy gammas over a million electron volts each. But this sort of thing doesn't have to be this crazy high-yield thing. This, this can happen with uh, just nuclear interactions. And again, it's just mass energy from light can create matter. Of course, they, then they typically don't they typically don't last for very long, but that's just one example. Physics is complicated, but basically, if you have a really strong magnetic field, you can deflect the plasma through a nozzle, just like in the chemical rockets humans use. Sure. But it would be much, much faster. 
because the they're charged. fastest rocket possibly, basically. Our relativistic missile is much bigger than a skyscraper. At the bottom is the bell-shaped magnetic nozzle, 100 meters wide. On top of it are 250 floors filled with antimatter and matter ready to annihilate each other. And you could conceivably, I mean, a civilization that has the power of a Dyson swarm, I mean, you could make these structures far larger if you wanted to. On the top floor is a 300 kilogram projectile looking quite small, about the size of a person. Yes, catch him again. To stop them getting damaged on the way, the missiles have dozens of sacrificial layers that form a Whipple shield. I guess we've never really established why this war started. Maybe Ash was uh, catching too many of them with his Pokeballs and they want revenge or something. To make sure they do their job, the Scorpions build 1,000 missiles. Let's fire them. Launching all the relativistic missiles is a spectacular event. And I mean, they could, if, if you have, if they have that much energy, they could considerably generate enough antimatter and, you know, just getting the raw materials to make something like that. Wouldn't really be that impressive if they built enough solar panels to surround a star. For a moment, the antimatter engines lighting up outshine their star. Their exhaust is really? a long trail of brilliant white, and as they accelerate away, they appear redder and redder until they turn invisible. With the extreme amount of energy released by the matter-antimatter reactions, the missiles are accelerated to 99.9999996% of the speed of light. They have effectively infinite range, as there's nothing really to slow them down. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> it's been, yeah, it's until they run into something or they just fall apart. That, that'll be the real challenge, is making the amount of material that's stable enough, because you, with that much momentum, if you, a collision with a grain of space dust, you will likely destroy it. Unless it's made out of super strong materials, but they might already have that materials technology again to make a Dyson Swarm. They arrive shortly after you can see them. The light from their launch will take 42 years to reach Earth. So, human astronomers might see the flash of the missile launch, than and light. then a few days later, they'll hit. Not enough time to prepare. Each relativistic missile packs the kinetic energy. Yeah, um, for all those who say like ICBMs or hypersonic missiles are hard to intercept, those would be a piece of cake between trying to intercept something traveling this close to the speed of light. Only way you'd have a prayer is with a laser, and good luck hitting something like that too. Of a dinosaur killer asteroid, so only one needs to hit. Yeah. They never reach the ground, disintegrating instead at the edge of Earth's atmosphere. Intense blue flashes Just the kinetic set energy from itself. Yeah. Then continent-sized fireballs slam down on the surface to smash everything into dust, repeatedly, until nothing is left but rubble and smoke. So interstellar missiles with unlimited range, minimal warning, and delivering complete destruction of a planet's surface. Nice. And those would be those would be cheaper than the. Uh than the laser, the, the laser that takes one, that takes your entire Dyson Swarm. But they are a hassle to build. Is there something else, maybe? The ultra-relativistic electron beam. Ultra Humans do funny things to their food to rid it of bacteria and make it safe to eat, like shooting electron beams at yeah. strawberries. Small particle accelerators send electrons into the food with an energy similar to the radiation from nuclear reactions. So, Common misconception out there. People think irradiated or tr food treated in this way is, makes the food radioactive. It doesn't. It's just, it's just designed to sanitize from bacteria. It's, effective, it, it's not going to make it any more radioactive than shining some UV light on it that you use to clean rooms from COVID or what have you. Not enough to burn the food, but deadly to bacteria. Smorpions had the same idea, but bigger. The main Stronger. challenge with an electron beam is range. Electrons are negatively charged particles, so they don't want to stay near each other. A regular electron beam will quickly spread out, making it harmless. Smorpions need it to cover distances of dozens of light years. So they've used the rules of the universe to trick the electrons by building an ultra-relativistic electron beam. One other thing I'd point out, 42 light years, they might as well be next door neighbors to us, because the galaxy is 100,000 light years across, so... Ureb. What it does is accelerate the electrons to 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
thought I'd throw that out there. The slower time moves for it relative to the rest of the universe. And since these electrons are moving so incredibly fast, for every second of spreading they experience, over 5 million years pass in real time. A physics trick that lets the beam cross interstellar yeah, distances while remaining tightly focused on its target. The biggest particle accelerator on Earth is 27 kilometers long. The Scorpions need one that's over 100,000 kilometers long, a megastructure eight times longer <laughs> than Earth is wide. It's mostly a tube of magnets holding the beam together cool. until the exit. Like a long trumpet of doom surrounded by an aura of deadly radiation. When it's I fired, mean, it produces a magnet straight sure. lightning bolt pointed at Earth. Its effects on arrival are less visible than the other weapons. No flashes of light, no massive firestorms, no explosions. Get some dose. It doesn't destroy rocks, it destroys DNA. People get dizzy, then fall sick as their cells are pierced by radiation. I mean, basically, it's a beta particle burst. Beta particles are electrons. And talked about gamma ray bursts that exist in nature. This is a beta particle burst. I mean, sure, it's, it's conceivable. And the thing is, this wouldn't actually destroy the planet. So they could, exp they could put boots on the ground and just colonize Earth after they've wiped out all life on it. You might think that a deep bunker could save a few humans, but no. The Europe is so penetrating that its effects fast. accumulate to lethal doses even underground over days or weeks. So here's here's one big difference. Um, so beta beta particles, you probably if you've watched any of my previous videos, would say they wouldn't really penetrate your clothing or even something about as thick as a credit card will stop them. That's under normal conditions from from a beta source that decays naturally. This is super high energy levels accelerated to just about the speed of light and their penetrating power is going to be a whole lot crazier so they're going to have the penetrating power of gamma rays from a gamma ray burst complete with the heightened energy transfer from beta particles so this is a pretty nasty artificial source of radiation in the end just like our strawberries earth becomes sterile yeah simulation results Hmm, another elaborate animated science explainer by Kotzkazat where we've learned a lot, not sure exactly what. <laughs> Luckily, the Scorpions don't really exist, but others might. One major downside of all our weapons is that others around the Milky Way could see you firing them, which is not ideal because you don't want to present yourself as a dangerous species and tell everybody where exactly you are. That's true. Maybe instead of shouting or shooting out into the universe, the best course of action seems to be to stay relatively quiet for now and observe. Maybe one day we'll witness distant stars shooting at each other and be glad we stayed out of it. Yeah, you need some sort of, uh, or just work on developing your faster than light technology so they wouldn't see it coming. Even from its origin source, you just essentially just go through a wormhole or something and then show up in your in the target solar system. So which one of those is your favorite? Or do you have another idea that's better than either of those three? Limited to, granted, these are a bit more grounded in reality than some crazy sci-fi weapons like the Death Star or the Sun Crusher or crazy energy-based attacks from Dragon Ball or <laughs> something. <laughs> I thought this was a really interesting one, though. I like the... Uh, I've, and I have to say, uh, I've never heard of the super beta particle beam burst thing. I forget what they called it, but that's a that's an interesting idea. A combination of the increased linear energy transfer and the uh, penetration power to create a crazy radiological weapon. I still prefer the peaceful uses of nuclear energy. And again, if you have a Dyson Swarm, you can use it for more productive means, <laughs> non-violent means, but maybe they really didn't like Ash Ketchum. They probably don't like that he never ages. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.